Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught software developer, and in today's video, I'm gonna answer the question, what is Angular? But I'm gonna answer that for the beginners out there, for people who are brand new to software development, maybe you've just learned JavaScript or HTML and CSS, and you're looking to get into a framework, and you heard about Angular, so like, what is it? Why should you learn it? I'm gonna cover that in today's video. So let's just get to it. I wanna do this fast and easy. So what is Angular? So Angular is a front-end framework, like we said, and it's really meant to develop single-page applications. Now, let's break that down. So what is a front-end framework? Because I'm sure you've heard this a lot, and there's a lot of front-end frameworks out there, and people use that term interchangeably, interchangeably with libraries sometimes, so it can get a little bit confusing. So the way I look at a front-end framework is it's really meant to make your life easier to develop a single page application or just applications in general. Because if you've ever built a website, you know that, for example, using JavaScript to interact with the DOM, it can work, it's great, but there's a lot of heavy lifting that goes on in between. There's a lot of stuff that you have to do, a lot of code you have to write. jQuery, uh, the library jQuery, which is sort of going out of fashion at this point due to front end frameworks, uh, used to do a lot of the heavy lifting that you would have to do with the DOM, but even beyond jQuery, there's a lot of stuff that you need to do. There's a lot of different, in general, there's just a lot of challenges with building large complex applications, making sure that the code is maintainable, making sure that it follows good uh, patterns of design, making sure that the different parts of the application are using the dry principles, so you're not reusing code all over the place, which is really hard using the old paradigm of HTML and JavaScript. So what a front-end framework basically does, and I'm talking about whether it's Angular or React or Vue, is they have a certain approach to developing a website or a single page application, meaning one page that gets loaded in your browser and just handles everything. So Angular specifically uses a couple different approaches that we'll get into that will make more sense. But to give you a sense of what Angular is, so Angular was originally developed by developers at Google. It's still maintained by the developers at Google. Um, but it was developed back in 2010. That was Angular version one, and that was called AngularJS. And it's really important to remember that because if you hear AngularJS, it means something different from Angular. Well, AngularJS had a certain approach to uh, you know, their way of going about building applications. The, the, I, I used it and I remember it very vividly, but now they moved to version two. And I think that was in 2014, maybe 2015. So Angular version two and above is now called Angular. So if you hear Angular, that's version two, all the way through what now is the most latest version, which is seven. So just keep that in mind. If you hear Angular, it's different from AngularJS. So what are some of the, just the key features here? Let's just kind of cover some of the basics and try to explain what they mean. So the first thing I would explain about Angular is that they it's a component-based front-end framework. So everything is based around components. And really, I love this idea because if you think of your standard website, everything on that page is really a component, right? So if you've got your, let's just think of like your own personal website. You've got a nav bar up top, maybe you've got a sidebar, in the sidebar you've got different widgets, you've got a main page with content in it, and each one of those things you can think of as its own isolated component, right? Like it has its own template, meaning it has its own HTML, and each one of those templates reveals data, right? So maybe there's data in the JavaScript that's making the title a certain way or making the text a certain way. Either way, that's the way that you can think about a website just like as a paradigm, right? So you can think of a website like that. Well, what Angular has done is they basically implemented that as a, an approach for designing websites. So what you can do is you can create reusable components. And each component is just worried about two things, really, if you think about it. It's worried about a template, right? So the HTML, and it's worried about some sort of data that needs to fill that template and it handles all the in-betweens, right? So that's where you've heard the term data binding. So you can basically, for example, let's say you have an input in your template, you can bind that either one way, meaning kind of read only, or two ways, meaning you can modify the data in the input, and it can go back and forth. You don't have to worry about hooking up a, you know, get document .get element by ID, getting that value out of there, like Angular will just take care of that for you. So it's very nice. Either way, you can create components in isolation, you can use them all over the place, and it really helps when you're developing large-scale applications, because really what you wanna do is you wanna have loose coupling and high cohesion in terms of the modules in your application, if you've heard that before. So you wanna have little modules all over the place, or in this case, components, that don't depend on each other too much, and that inside of that component, all the logic is just related to itself. That's an advanced topic for another day, but that's one of the things that I love about Angular that makes it easier to develop very complicated, large, complex applications that pass data around. 
Another feature that Angular provides for developers is that it uses client-side routing over server-side routing. So let's go old-fashioned here for a second. Let's say we created a personal website here and it's got three pages. Well, when you go to the nav bar and you click on any of those pages, what's gonna happen is your, your HTML, your JavaScript will make a request off to the server to get it that new page, you know, about me.html or, you know, homepage.html or contact me.html. And so when you make those requests, the server technically is routing those pages to you, right? You have to make a request for each. Maybe you have to pull, once you get that HTML file in, you have to pull in more JavaScript. What's cool about front-end frameworks and Angular specifically is that it will provide client-side routing. So if the browser, if the front-end is considered your client, what that means is when you click on the nav bar to go to a different page, Angular won't actually need to go to the server to get the files or the data for that page. Technically, that's not always true, but just follow with me here, okay? <laughs> there could be other situations uh, that I don't wanna get into right now, but for the most part, Angular will handle that. And you can just go from route to route to route, and you're, you technically wouldn't have to go to the server if you don't need any other information. Maybe you need data, for sure. You definitely need maybe data to fill those, you know, those components or those pages, but as far as getting the, the templates or the general JavaScript, that can all be in the front end. You don't have to make tons of requests over to your server. So that can be very helpful. One of the best features in my opinion is the dependency injection, which makes unit testing a lot easier. If you wanna know more about unit testing, I actually created a video, uh, it's really good. It's based mostly in C Sharp, but even if you come from a different programming language, I think you can pretty well understand it, so check that out. But Angular has built in dependency injection and dependency injection is terrific. It is, allows you to unit test because anytime that you unit test, let's say a component, which I, I, can you really call a module, you wanna make sure that that module, which typically modules will depend on other outside modules, like, right, so for example, if you have one module that needs an HTTP module that makes HTTP requests, well, if I wanna test this service here in isolation, but it depends on an outside module, I can't, you know, I have to do something with this module here. I don't want it to make HTTP requests because if it depends on that module that's making HTTP requests, then I can't really test this in isolation. So what dependency injection allows you to do is the dependency injection activator or thing that goes out and pulls that, that service in and provides it for your module. Well, you can tell it to mock it in a unit test and in production, you could tell it to give it the actual module. So if you didn't understand that, don't worry, it's not a big deal, but dependency injection pretty much provides that. So unit testing is very easy in Angular. And in fact, the Angular CLI, which is the tool that you can use to build components and run your Angular application on your local environment, well, it will actually create unit tests for you. So you don't have to go through this process of setting up unit testing, which in JavaScript for me was very painful when I did it at my first company. I was actually, uh, I tried to help doing that. So uh, yeah, so unit testing is a lot easier and it's a key component to having applications that don't break a lot. So, uh, you know, developers definitely love that. Really the reason that I tend to really love Angular and, you know, a lot of front end frameworks definitely do this as well, but Angular it is my specific, where I specifically have a lot of experience is that it isolates the, the view layer from the model layer. And the way you can think about this is just that you've got your HTML and then you've got your component, right? And your HTML just is worried about displaying data. So when I have my HTML file and I wanna make something really pretty and I wanna make sure that the data is gonna be there, I just work on the, the, the view basically and just make sure it looks pretty. I tell the view where the data is gonna be coming from or what the data is and the component worries about getting the data back maybe from a server, making sure the data is in the right, you know, massage in the right way so that it's easy for the view to use. So you separate the view and the model and it's just very easy to develop. You don't have to think about wiring up things. You don't have to think about things breaking. It's just a lot simpler than the old paradigm of making websites. So that's what I really like about it. Now, the question is, should you learn Angular? Now, my answer is yes, I love Angular. I think it's great. I have had a lot of experience with helping people learn Angular through my mastermind program, and I, I will tell you that people get very frustrated when they first learn it. There's a lot of reasons for that. One is that it's it's like learning a new programming language in a way because it's, again, it's Angular's paradigm. It's their opinionated approach to developing websites. So you have to basically learn how they want you to build a website. After you go through that process, after you go through some of the frustration of, of learning, you know, for example, a little bit of TypeScript, of learning maybe ES6 if you haven't been introduced to it, because Angular does use a lot of ES6 features, such as classes and modules. So once you go through that process and you've actually built a few websites or even a website of your own with Angular, you'll start to see the benefits. 
Now, I don't think like people love to get in this argument, what's the best framework? Look, I think Angular is great. If you learn Angular pretty well, you'll be able to transition to React. You'll be able to transition to Vue and you just, it's a different paradigm to learn. But at the end of the day, like at least what you've learned with Angular is what's possible with front end frameworks. So I would recommend looking, if you're really trying to get your first job and you don't want to waste a lot of time, I highly recommend look, doing research and finding out like in your area, what's the best to learn. Like for some places, some locations like West Coast, especially React is all the rage. Here in Chicago, I would probably recommend Angular. So it really just depends on where you live. But again, if you learn Angular full tilt, you're not gonna go wrong. It's not gonna be the end of the world. But if you want to really strategize, then maybe think about where your location is and do a little research on it. So I hope this helps. This is my, you know, what is Angular for beginners? Uh, I hope you liked the video. So leave a like and, and make sure to hit subscribe below. This channel is 100% about teaching people how to become software developers, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from. I wanna make anyone who's willing to put in the work and effort, I wanna help them along in their process. All right, and just to let you know too, I've created a free report of the five best programming languages to learn in 2019. I just put that out recently. I spent a lot of time on it. It's really highly detailed. So if you want a free copy of that report, go to andysterkwitz.com forward slash report. The link is also in the description below. Definitely pick up a free copy of that before you head out. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and uh, peace out as always, guys.